welcome to In the Cool of the Day. I am your host, Tia Young, and we have a great show for you today. Our special guest is an author and a retired Fairfax County public school early childhood educator of more than 35 years. She has worked as a daycare center director and taught preschool through third grades. She also worked as a reading recovery teacher, a literacy coach, and math resource teacher. She is a graduate of Alabama A&M University. She earned her master's degree in teaching from George Mason University. She also plays the bass clarinet in the orchestra. Please welcome Miss Alma Haygood. Alma, how are you today? Oh, wonderful. How about you, Tia? Well, I'm doing good, and I'm so glad that you were able to take a, a couple of minutes away from the, the, the children and to come here and visit with us today. Oh, thank you. Good. Well, let's get started, because I know you have to get back to school a little later on. So um, I'm going to start out with, Alma, why did you write the book, Too Many Rules? Well, Tia, it's interesting. I wrote Too Many Rules because as a classroom teacher, I was always looking for new and interesting ways to teach rules. You know, at the beginning of the year, we always start off talking about rules to help the children get um, acclimated to the new grade level that they're in and also to try to establish routines. So that's a part of everyone's beginning of the year. Uh, I was just simply looking for a new way to teach rules after years and years and years of teaching. So I'd go to the library and look for something that was fun to read yes. as a read aloud, basically, is what I was looking for. But I wanted it to be something that taught, had a, a lesson involved. Not too deep because we spend a lot of time at the beginning of the year, so we use different techniques and different, uh, lots of different uh, reading materials to help teach those things. So I wanted a book that kind of focused on listening, because mm. listening is something that is developed at the beginning of the year. Whatever the grade level is, it takes a while to get students uh, in, in place where they know what to do and they know what to expect and they know what the routine is, and then they actually start to develop and build their attention span. So what I found was I just couldn't find it. Uh -huh. So that's how I ended up with too many rules. Well, Alma, uh, you, you mentioned uh, elementary um, education development. What, what age group does that take in when you think of early childhood development? When does er that start? Early childhood development really starts with birth all the way up to age eight. Okay, all and right. I didn't know that. Yes, That's yes. interesting, because I'm thinking, you know, maybe three, four, five years old, but it starts at birth. Starts at birth. It starts when they're born, and there are different stages of development, mm -hmm. starting from the little uh, babies at birth all the way up to eight, grade uh, three and age eight, and then they move into another developmental level after that. After that. Well, Alma, is this your first published work? It is my first published work, What yes. kind of experience did you have with that? Was it something really easy to just breeze right through it, or was it a, a, some challenge there? Well, it was an interesting experience in looking for a publisher. I had to research publishing companies. There are different ways to get published, mm -hmm. and I had to decide how I wanted to do that. And I spent months and months and months uh, researching how to get published and deciding which way I wanted to go with that. And I also took a class at NOVA because I had finished the book before I retired. Then I went back and revised it and I wanted to make it more exciting. So I took a class for about four months right after I retired and so I would say the whole process of doing all of that and finding a publisher mm. and an illustrator and uh, getting it published took almost a year. Right. That whole process. Now you mentioned NOVA, that's Northern Virginia Community College. Is that, that is correct. Okay, good, yes, good. Yes. And you also mentioned something else I wanted to, to touch on is that uh, you mentioned that you've worked with an illustrator. I know that was 
Al Margolis. Al Margolis, Margolis yes. Said it. Tell me about that experience. What is it like to work with a, a, a real life illustrator? <laughs> well, it was exciting for me. Someone recommended Al Margolis and I was able to pull a lot of information about his books from the internet to see his work. And I wanted an experienced illustrator since this is my first experience at writing. Um, so I found Al and he and I connected and talked several times and he sent me a lot of information to share about his work. So I actually liked his work when I saw all the things he had illustrated on, um, on, from just pulling it online. And so we talked and set it up where most of the illustrations are done electronically. Mm -hmm. So I was looking for someone who had the capacity to do all of those things electronically, which made it a lot easier, my piece uh, of it. Well, I have to say, I love your cover. I think this is really, really, uh, really neat with the children and the teacher there is really neat. Oh, so he thank did a good you. job. Thank you. <laughs> now let's get into, um, I know that you've been t uh, with Fairfax County as a um, teacher for over 35 years. Yes. So that means that you've been around a couple of years. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a newbie here. <laughs> did, have you, did you, before you retired, can you speak a little bit about what you noticed from the first year you started teaching until the time you retired? in the attitudes of children and yes. the respect of rules, is it better or what, did it get worse? Well, that is such an interesting question, Tia, because the, the school systems where I started working uh, 35, really, it's been 37 years ago now. It, it, we're just living in different times. It's mm. a different generation in terms of schools. When schools first, when I first started uh, teaching, children sat in nice little rows and they sat there all day and the teacher would talk and they just listened. Like and me. they were taught to just <laughs> listen from yeah, home. That's what I would do. <laughs> but we live in a different society. We have a lot of technology. We have a lot competing with the teacher's attention today. So I think that schools have changed to really uh, get involved in what interests the students. For example, even with teaching rules, um, I remember the teacher would get up and just tell you what the rules were, and you just you know Follow. commit those to memory and mm -hmm. do what it said. Now we we do something more innovative, like we discuss rules. Do you understand what rules are? And then we do brainstorm, and there's a page in the book where we brainstorm rules and we uh, uh, write down exactly what the children say to us. And they may say no hitting, no spitting, no this, no that. And we write all of that stuff down and then we discuss it. And then when, it, when the time comes for us to select rules, we write them in a positive way. Like keep your hands, feet, and objects to yourself. It means no hitting, no spitting, no, it means all of that but it's just written in a positive way. Mm -hmm. So uh, the this, this schools are designed today to engage students in learning. Mm -hmm, I see. And we found that you actually get a lot more buy-in when they're engaged. And it's like they're included in a lot of what goes on. So I think schools have had to change because times have changed. Right. Well, with respect to um, discipline problems, um, say those kids that don't follow the rules and you do have trouble with them, have you noticed that uh, their learning ability or their scores are lower because they don't discipline, you know, they're not disciplined? I know my brother was prankish in school, but he still <laughs> got his grades somehow. You know, oh, he, yes. he, he got his grades and he ended up okay, but then it seems like other kids, that was a problem for them. Well, I think you have to identify why a child isn't listening or is a discipline problem. In, in, in my experience, I've found a lot of times students misbehaved when they didn't understand what was going on. Um, now, if that's a problem, that can be easily eradicated. But then you have to separate out why we're having the issues or why, 
why there's a problem. I, I remember um, over the years having children who may have had difficulty in things like learning to read, but once that was identified and they got the additional help, the behavior problems disappeared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that when a classroom is set up to where it's engaging to students and, and you set up a community of learners, which involves them in their learning process, and we provide choice in, L in, in lower elementary grades, we provide choice where they select from centers the different things that interest them, uh, learning stations. So th there's so many things that they have a little bit of choice in. They can't choose what they learn because that's a curriculum that's already set. set up but that along with uh, some of the things we do to establish good relationships, both with the teachers and the children, those kinds of things kind of eliminate most behavior problems. Mm -hmm. And when and those problems that are left over just have to be addressed a different a way. A different way, right. Yes. Well, Alma, we have about two minutes before we uh, uh, go to the break. I wanted you to tell us the reaction um, from parents and from students about your book. Well, the students have, I've gotten rave reviews from students, and I've read this story to students from preschool all the way up through third grade so far. And they like it because they can identify with sitting there at the beginning of the year, listening to talks about rules, and really wanting to be somewhere else. Mm. Because in the beginning, it seems a little bit overwhelming, which is why we try to make what we do a little fun. But most of the students can identify with feeling some of the things the main character felt, not one to listen. Just really, I wish I were out of here and playing on the playground. On the playground. Yes. But what about the parents? Well, the parents like it because they've said, I really do know someone like that. And sometimes they've told me, I'm going to read this story to my child because then he can, or she will know the importance of listening. Listening, right. Well, we are going to take a short break at this time, but we'll be right back. So don't touch that dial. I wouldn't have to raise my voice if you would just give it back and stop being like a criminal. I don't have your cell phone. Oh God, I don't have look your at yourself. What, what are you offering? Is, you is this a thief's uniform? Oh my you see all these people standing around here? Oh, Why am oh, I the one? I'm sorry, homie. Right okay. Oh. What? Don't make this a big deal. Just give it back, okay? Did you see me? Did yeah, you see and you me? Yeah, I just know you took it. Where are your witnesses? Look at Where are your witnesses? Did you see me? Did you see me? You left us in the bathroom. Welcome back. You're watching In the Cool of the Day with me, your host, Tia Young, and our special guest and author, Alma Haygood. Alma, tell me, are you planning to write more books, and will you take your concept on the road? I am planning to write more books. Uh, I don't, I'm not exactly sure when I'm going to start this process, but I'm very excited about taking these same characters and continuing to address some of the things that we're uh, teaching in school as it relates to rules and even character education. Right, that's good. Well, you know, I think uh, at this time what we'll do is you brought in some excellent slides, and so I want to show our viewers uh, some of these great illustrations and concepts that you have. So uh, let's see, the first one, that we're gonna talk about is called, it looks like also the cover of your book, but I'm calling it Raised Hands. <laughs> Tell me what Raised Hands is all about. 
Well, raised hands is, is a, a, a page where the teacher is actually talking about rules and she's asking questions of the students. How many of you know why we need rules? And she's, they're, they're actually getting ready to start their discussion about the importance of listening and some of the things they're going to be doing in school this year. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the next slide is, and I love this, <laughs> it's simply called looking. <laughs> what is that one about? Here's where the little uh, um, character Elgin, Thor Davis, that is the little boy who is the main character in the book. He didn't listen, they ended up outside and um, the class were the last ones to get outside. The, all the children are really upset with him. So they're all looking at him with that eye of, oh, you got us in trouble. Oh, so he's the one with the red, in the red hair. Yes, That's, yes. And his name again is? <laughs> his Elgin Thor Davis. Elgin Thor Davis. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now the next one is simply called chart. And I'm telling you, the teacher's looking a little frustrated in this one. <laughs> This is where they're talking about uh, rules. They're brainstorming the list of rules. And with the brainstorm, usually the teacher writes down exactly what the children say. And one of them said, no pulling other people's hair. And someone said, no hitting. Someone said, no spitting. And the little boy, uh, Elgin, he looks up and he says, when do we get to go out and play? <laughs> <laughs> right in the middle of in the middle of whatever <laughs> she's doing <laughs> she's doing oh here's a good one lunch lunch is where they ha he's having Elgin is having lunch with his friends and the, his friends are trying to talk to him about listening and they're saying to him oh you're really going to get in trouble and Elgin is sitting there and he says I don't care I'm <laughs> bored and he says to his um, to his friends, Miss Rumbley talks too long and too much. <laughs> so when you get little ones in, in a class that are behaving that way, are there some reasons, you know, that some that could be some reasons that well, would cause them? Occasionally, sometimes you will find students that just are not ready for all this listening and rules and they, it takes them a while to get used to that. And that's what the beginning of the school year usually involves. Okay. So some of them just may not have the maturity level to sit there and listen while the teacher reads a story at the very beginning. But as school progresses, usually their attention span gets longer and they have less problems with listening. You know, you, you say that about the attention span and the maturity, and I can remember when I was a little child, I don't know if they still do this now, but there would be some children who would be six years old, but they they just made six. Oh, yeah. And the school would make them stay another year. They would make them go until they were seven. They couldn't start. Does that have anything to do with maturity level and trying to have kids in? You know, when they're really ready? Well, I, I think that when you look at it from a developmental perspective, sometimes children do mature faster than others, regardless of their chronological age. But I think in Fairfax County in particular, the age for coming to school in, at the very beginning, kindergarten, it used to be the end of December if you turned six then you could come to school. Now it's been moved all the way back to the beginning of September. Over a period of years, they kind of yeah. moved it back one month, month each year until it became the beginning of okay. So they September. have to be six years old by, by the, beginning the beginning of September. Of September. Yes. Right, and when I was little, if you know, it was December, I think. I think it was later, I mean, because a lot of kids didn't start till they were seven. Yeah, and I, I don't, I'm not really sure about um, what it is in other systems. Right, right. But I know now that, that over the years it was just moved down. When I first came to Fairfax County, it was the end of December. Okay. If they were five, then they could attend, um, they would be able to attend first kindergarten. Kindergarten, yes. okay. Now, here's the next slide, president. 
Oh, that is a picture of Elgin Thor Davis and his friends. While they're talking about rules, he's dreaming about being president of the United States, and he's attending his own inauguration in his head. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> and then we get getting up. Oh, this is on the way to the fire drill. He's falling down because his uh, shoestrings are not tied, and eventually he lost his shoes altogether. <laughs> <laughs> And then here we have another getting uh, out, he's getting uh, outside, going outside again, and he Out has tears in his eyes this time. He has tears in his eyes because he has lost both of his shoes, shoes <laughs> and he's upset, the teacher's upset because she has to hold his hand to bring him. He wants to go back and get his shoes, and that's not allowed since a fire drill is a practice for a real fire it wouldn't be safe for him to stop and go back and get his shoes. Right, that's right. Well, Alma, you have, um, uh, you know, been retired now, I guess, what, a, a couple of years, a year? A year and a half A year now. and a half. Yes, yes. But yet you've been called back in to do a special project with Fairfax County. Tell us a little bit about the project that you're working on. Well, actually, I started off uh, working uh, as just testing, helping with testing at the very beginning of the year. And uh, I'm at Bailey's Elementary in Falls Church, and I continue to work there three days a week as a reading resource teacher, which means I help students and both individual and in small groups with reading and writing skills. Okay, all right, are you enjoying that? Oh, I'm very much enjoying <laughs> it. <laughs> That's good. What message, Alma, would you want the school systems, parents, and guardians to get out of too many rules? I think I want the students to enjoy it first when they read it to them. But the message that I'd like uh, to get out is that it's, it's just typical for some students to take longer to adjust to a new grade level than others. The reason the children love this book so much is they can identify with some of the things Elgin thought. They just wouldn't say it. They're disciplined enough where they might not say it out loud. But the beginning of the year, it takes a while for them to get adjusted and to really start to like school. It just takes a little while. Now, some students go through this process faster than others. So I'd like for parents and teachers and students to remember that it is a process. And it takes a little while before they actually get settled in. And this book was just a fun way to talk about rules. Right. And do you, would you agree, because I'm thinking that um, the school systems, the parents, and the teachers should be working together as in unity. Oh, definitely, do you, definitely. You know, do you feel that, that that's critical? It is critical and it really makes for a better chance of, of success for the children. Right. Now, Alma, you are also uh, very involved with many activities in the community. And I know I went to your book signing, uh, I guess about a month ago, and yeah. it was with the uh, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, Inc., the Prince William County alumni chapter, honored you along with uh, probably five or six other thought leaders at their fifth annual Red Carpet Showcase. Tell us a little bit about that experience. That was very exciting. It was very exciting. Well, your face just um, lighted up. <laughs> <laughs> I really was honored to be a part of this. It was a red carpet event where each author or um, was introduced and we read a little bit of, of our book and also talked about the motivation for writing the book and um, j just, it was a celebration. Of, of And it was very exciting for me being a first-time author to have someone celebrate me in that manner. Right. It was a very, very good event. We, we enjoyed it. Now, are you available for speaking engagements and, and workshops? And, it, and if you are, what, what are your thoughts about how they would be formatted? Well, um, I am available for workshops, but what I do with the younger children is usually read the story 
and then we discuss it and talk about it. With older children, I've done writing activities mm -hmm. where we talk about the writing process and I talk more about my journey as an author because the older children are able to deal with the process of writing because mm -hmm. they do that every day in their classrooms. Younger children do it also just on a different level. So I've, I've read it, um, with, I've, I've presented my book for writing workshops with older students and for the younger students as a reading activity, read aloud, and I've read it to both groups, but we get into different kinds of discussions with upper grade students. Right. Well, Alma, it has been such a pleasure to have you as our guest today. We look forward to having you back on In the Cool of the Day very soon. Alma's book is delightful and packed with nuggets of gold for our preschool and elementary age children. I'm an adult and I have read the book two times already. <laughs> our children today are so bright and energetic, but too many of them do not follow the rules when they are young. And when they get older, you have a mess on your hands. The book is available at Ingram, Amazon.com, Barnes and Noble, and fine bookstores everywhere. Thank you for watching in the cool of the day, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.